Benjamin Malfish, you did the score for The Invisible Man, which is a very unique take on the horror genre. Uh, and I, I feel like your score reflects that too. Uh, so was that one of the reasons you joined the film? I mean, it was a fascinating idea. When I read the script, I, I, I was so excited by, you know, Lee Wannell's vision for this iconic uh, character and really bringing it into the contemporary sphere. And, and you know, it's a, it's a powerful story about a woman uh, fighting for her life against an entity only she knows is, is alive and no one can see. And uh, it's a sort of study in in, in how gas gaslighting can drive someone crazy, uh, but still ultimately the sort of triumph of of the human spirit. And in particular, I mean, um, Elizabeth Moss's character, Cecilia, this, this unbelievable strength that she conveys uh, to just overcome something just unthinkably terrifying. Um, and I mean, the most scary part of the story is in many ways how through Adrian's actions as the Invisible Man, she is deliberately become becomes more isolated and less able to rely on, on the normal support systems that anyone in her position would, would call on. So it was one of those things where the challenge was was huge and, and, and I, I was just really excited to dive in with Lee and, and start experimenting and you know finding finding solutions to those those challenges. Mm -hmm. You and Lee discuss. Well, a lot of it was kind of the tone of the film because it, it's it it really feels like a, the sort of Hitchcockian pacing and the camera work, the, the lock shots, and the way it's cut. It's that kind of brooding Hitchcock tension, and it, I was really excited because something I've one of my favorite scores is is Psycho of Bernard Herrmann, and of course everyone knows that for the shower scene, but. I've always just been in awe of that score because of how he uses just a string orchestra uh, as a deliberate choice, you know, to mirror the black and white photography, obviously, as everyone knows, but, but it was this, he gets so much out of those string players and it's almost because the players are forced to, to go beyond their comfort zone all the time because they don't have the support of the winds or the brass or anything else. So it's something I've always been fascinated by listening whenever i listen to that score i just thought it would be so cool one day to have that opportunity and this was a perfect chance to to try that theory out um and 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 so yeah it was we discussed a lot about um about herman and 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 melody and and using a kind of melodic approach where every time you hear a theme it gets a little bit more distorted you know to sort of mirror um cecilia's descent into madness or but to make her the way she pulls herself out of that situation that much more powerful so there's this kind of consistent um there are two themes really for her there's this piano theme which you hear right at the towards the beginning of the movie it's like a very insistent sort of motif that's quite repetitive and and deliberately asymmetrical so when it repeats it falls on a, on a different chord each time um and then uh, and a cello theme which is kind of like her, who she remembers herself to be and who she's striving to get back to through 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 the film and then that theme kind of uh, and actually the, the the whole yeah it sort of elevates at the end but the, the whole thing was actually starting at the end because that the the the, the, the oh, like the her, her win at the end <laughs> that it's kind of very it's a shot of elizabeth moss just walking towards the camera not saying a word for about a minute um a bit less but it, it was we, that was the point where the score kind of had to take take the lead in in her in her inner story and her where, what what she has just managed to do and the journey she's just been on. So um, starting there meant we had some somewhere to aim for. But the other thing was like, how do you score something invisible? And and actually, the, sort of almost like weaponizing silence was the key thing. So you just sort of when the score isn't there, you almost don't trust it in as much as the same way as you don't trust the empty spaces on the screen. In, in the way very deliberately the way it's been shot so so to do that we we you know in addition to that quite classical sound with you know just strings and piano we had incredibly off the wall bananas electronic stuff which is deliberately super confrontational and and quite weird like we did some like really unexpected like yeah it's very aggressive like synth sound yeah. Yeah. and to give lee all credit you know i i delivered a lot of the cues to the dub stage mixed you know with everything separated out and he would sometimes just grab one thing from like five or six stems and just use that one thing uh just because it's a, he's such an incredible sort of sense of what 
music can do when it's very experimental. And and I love that because sort of let him loose <laughs> with the stems and make it his own in so many ways. Um, and yeah, it was it was a really interesting process from that point of view because like silent, we think you know when you spot a score a movie and you figure out where cues come and go. A lot of the time when there isn't a cue is because well why do we need a cue? But our decision was we're specifically timing the you know this moment and thinking about how that cue ends, how that cue begins, so that that moment feels so tense. That you're like, what's the next thing we're going to be hit with? Where so it was, it was that was kind of fun to to kind of use yeah, uh, like a lot of times in horror films, the music starts to clue you in that something's about to happen, so you're expecting right. it. But here, the score doesn't start until something happens, like he attacks her, and then it just goes from like zero to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's. We, we never wanted to lead the audience um and it's 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 such a brilliantly made movie because it, it uses quite kind of old school conventions but in a really modern way um and and also i mean the whole thing really was just elizabeth moss i mean her performance is, is so powerful and every decision i made was was led by her and and how she projected her you know her story uh that's silly a story obviously um you know that that was the the guiding star in the, in the musical decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the cues also end very abruptly. Like there's no fade outs. What was the choice behind that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's to kind of add to that sense of never being predictable, never sort of deliberately throwing a hand grenade at, at convention uh, into, into, into the idea that a cue should sort of elegantly start and elegantly stop. It's like if, if, you, if you sort of set up you know, by just putting music in a movie, you're already in a sort of, con certain things are expected sometimes. And by just breaking all those rules deliberately, it, it creates this weird tension where it's, we, we were just trying to kind of make it so that you weren't really aware of that too much. Uh, it just sort of fed into the disorientation that Cecilia is is experiencing throughout and, and, and which increases throughout the movie. Yeah, it's like her paranoia just like escalates. Right. And then you could think like, oh, now she's having like a, a sane moment. <laughs> well, like when, when you do have uh, so much silence to deal with, like is is there like a temptation to maybe like over compose or compose more than you need and then you could just like not use that material? Well, there was, there were a couple of moments where where I wrote a cue and then and Lee and I just said, you know what, let's just not use it because it's it's more interesting when there's when there is that silence and but actually, when we spotted it, um, you know, Lee, Lee's such a music, great musician, he understands how to thread that needle between like not wanting to lead the audience, but also just make, you know, having having the score kind of serve that extra character purpose. Um, and I think that's what, what was interesting is starting with um, with Cecilia as, as you know, her themes was that was we had to get that right and deliberately not not even touching Adrian, uh, the Invisible Man. <laughs> until we'd really figured that out kind of meant that we were able to um, be very precise about exactly where things should come and go. And when we subtracted, it was, it was mostly to kind of, again, not lead the audience and not, not, uh, not hint at what's about to come. Um, and also the, the use of electronics was quite, was quite important choice. Mostly well, two things, it was to create that, the total extreme contrast with the orchestral stuff to that, to make that weird, Void between two things that shouldn't sort of almost shouldn't exist together in one score, um, but also of course because of the technology that um, Adrian uses as a scientist. an optics ground yeah. here. <laughs> and uh, so exactly, and and so just you know imagining the sound of synthesizers that have just been pushed way too hard and and just through way too much crazy distortion and and uh, you know, that was actually really fun. It was like I'd never thought I'd have the chance to to. <laughs> Right, quite such aggressive electronic stuff at the same time as doing very intimate string stuff. It was it was really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, you've done a few horror films, and do you uh, look at them as like strictly horror films, or do you look at them as films with horror elements? Because horror as a genre is often a metaphor for everyday life and everyday horrors. Like you know, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a metaphor for high school and like teen angst and stuff. And mm -hmm. You know, this film is like you said like about gaslighting and abuse so how do you when you sign on to like a horror film how do you approach mm. uh, well, to your point I, I don't think of it as a horror film mm -hmm. uh, to start with um 
you know, for, for the Invisible Man, it's very much a, a sort of psychological thriller aspect. Um, and in the same way with the, the It movies, uh, which I was so lucky to be a part of, for me, they're adventure films, and, and they're about the coming of age of, of these incredible kids and the Losers Club. And there obviously is a lot of terrifying stuff in the movie, but that, that's, to, that's not the point. Um, and, and, and even with a, a very much a sort of a genre a horror film like Annabelle, uh, creation that that was really interesting because again it, it was all about making sure those characters feel as vivid and uh, you invest in them as much as you would with any other kind of movie um, so that there's you know, there's still an emotional element so I, I always try to to bring that approach no matter what the genre is and and I love uh, I mean what's interesting about working with filmmakers when there's a thriller aspect or horror aspect or sort of psychological thriller or whatever it's it becomes incredibly precise in terms of like the, the really specific timing and the mapping things out in a, in a kind of in that microscopic way but also in that global way um and and it's and it's really interesting to work in that way and then do something much more with much broader brush strokes like a drama uh where it you can just make you don't have to go into that sort of very molecular way of thinking and the trick is of course to to make it so that you're not molecular it it, so it does feel natural and broad so it's I, I just love working with editors and filmmakers who have have that kind of approach and where we're we're sort of trojan horsing a, a, a much bigger story into something which is on the surface just a really scary movie to, that, that, people, that you can sort of get into on that level yeah uh well ben it was great speaking with you thanks so much for your yeah. time and we'll see you back here in a little bit